Lord Nelson has one. Peter Pan has one. Even Paddington Bear has one. Can you guess what I'm talking about? That's right, statues. But one of London's most famous sons, the poet and painter William Blake, writer of the fantastic hymn Jerusalem, has been shortchanged in the commemorative stakes. Amazingly, no one even knows where he's buried. And therein lies a tale. This burial ground is called Bunhill Fields and lies right in the heart of our capital. If you were to walk through it quickly, you'd never know that William Blake is buried here. Just over there, on that bit of stone, it says, nearby lies the remains of William Blake and his wife, Catherine Sophia. Nearby? What does that mean? I was very surprised to find that a great man lies in an unmarked grave somewhere around here. But hopefully all that is about to change. For the last two years, Lewis and Carol Garrido, through intricate detective work, have been trying to pinpoint exactly where he's buried. Do you want, to, do you want me to hold something? Yeah, could you hold that? Yeah. Thanks, ever so much. We're trying to just work out whether we can use this grave over here, which yeah. is Reverend Matthew Wilkes's grave, by chance. There's a, a burial order book, which oh, yeah. started in 1789, the year of the French Revolution, so the whole cemetery was divided in a, gr in a grid square. But then in the 60s, a black stone had to be removed because uh, a big lawn was being prepared for people to enjoy. And since then, people forgot where it used to be. We thought maybe somewhere there's some information we can find out where Blake's grave was. It's not just Blake's burial place that's been lost. Most of the houses he lived in have gone too. But not the one he wrote Jerusalem in. Rather surprisingly, it's slap bang in London's West End. London was a green and pleasant land for Blake. He lived in his imagination. This is the only surviving house in London of William Blake. He created Jerusalem in this very house. I behold London, a human, awful wonder of God. My streets are my ideas of imagination. It was a time in his life when all the 50 years of preparation came into flower to create what we remember Blake for. Lots of Londoners who know about Blake come here. It's a place of pilgrimage. People come and knock on my door. In the street, there is someone who is homeless. He sleeps in the doorway of some of the fashion shops in South Morton Street. He quotes Blake at me. London. Blake's vision of a green and pleasant land wouldn't have included homeless people. He loved London, but Jerusalem and other poems he wrote at the beginning of the 19th century were scathing about the squalid lives many Londoners were forced to live. I wander through each chartered street near where the charter Thames does flow and marking every face I meet, marks of weakness, marks of woe. It was describing the reality. One thing was describing the conditions in London, which were appalling, of course. Another thing is to have a vision of what it could become, what it should become. He was very conscious of what was being done to the poorer people, to the children, and the exploitation that was going on in the sort of name of the Industrial Revolution like the little chimney sweep boys who had to be sent up chimneys. How the chimney sweepers cry, every blackening church appalls, and the hapless soldier sigh runs in blood down palace walls. So we're trying to find a, a coordinate, a, a square that is seven foot by three foot square. That's right. We knew from the Blake scholars that when anybody was buried at Bunhill Fields, they gave them an east-west and north-south burial coordinates, and Blake says 77 east and west and 32. 
north-south. I want to put a stick in. <laughs> <laughs> what had happened was people had forgotten how these coordinates could be used. And one of the things that helped us most was by measuring the position of existing graves today. We also got something out of the Guild Hall which showed that the librarian in 1924 had worked out a way of using the coordinates to find an unmarked grave. Once we'd done our measurements on site, we suddenly realised how this system worked. It lines up with Joseph Scales and Edward Scales. It's a family vault, and we know the coordinates of that. Right. We know that they've got uh, a coordinate which is um, 71 <laughs> and 32. Now, the 32 corresponds to Blake's 32. But we need 77. We need 77. Right. 77 lines up with Reverend Wilkes. Right, OK, so which, wh where are we counting from now, from the 35? Now we need to count this way. As Carol and Lewis started to unravel the mystery, another surprise awaited me. William Blake's birthplace in Soho now has a whacking great tower block on it. Blake was born in that house on the e uh, edge there. Well, it's, the house isn't there, it was demolished in the 60s, and uh, that octagonal-shaped office block is the very corner. It was, it was a corner. It was and can you remember him? Remember him personally? No, I'm not saying <laughs> you're that old, love. <laughs> can you remember the house, though? Yes, I can. It was, it, the whole end of the street was very shabby. When he was born in 1757, that house was comparatively new. It had only been up about 20 years. There would be great spaces everywhere, fields, sheep and things. So at that, that time, was it an area that was growing fast? Was it becoming... Yes, a... it, it was, you know, it, it was like Milton Keynes, except <laughs> in Soho. <laughs> well, actually, Soho is basically an 18th century invention, you know. They must have seen it built on, as, as we would be affected, we saw it happening to somewhere near us, you know. You're living in a cottage in the country and suddenly it's built up all around you. You know, it must be devastating, really. Because I was happy upon the heath, and smiled among the winter snow. They clothed me in the clothes of death and taught me to sing the notes of woe. Do you have any idea where Blake's grave is then? Or are we just pacing for no reason? No, 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 we know exactly where it is, really. Oh, great. Finally, good news for Blake. Lewis and Carol solved the mystery. That's one of the corners. One of the corners? Of the, of the grave. OK, where's another one? Well, the, the next one will be on the same line, of okay. course. Let's say about here. Do, yep. you, do you agree, Carol? Yep, yep. Am I out of line a bit? Just a little, a little bit, bit, yeah. Yep. Seven feet we from... We want seven feet now. Uh, Six, seven, eight, forty-two. Yeah. And that's his resting place. Indeed. So somewhere underneath here, he is lying. Head up this end. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, so I'm going to do an X marks a spot for his head? Yes. Indeed. It would be nice to do a nice monument. It's for London now to propose something. It's not for us, really. I mean, this year we are celebrating Blake's 250th anniversary. So this would be the ideal time to achieve that. You really would think that a man whose brilliance wasn't recognised in his lifetime, but has been much celebrated since, deserves a fitting memorial right here, if this is where he's buried. London is full of monuments, after all, and many of them celebrating much less individuals than the man who wrote Jerusalem. Do you think there should be a proper memorial set up in London for William Blake? Why not take part in our online poll? I'll give you the web address in a moment. Before that, though, let's take a peek at what's coming up on...